All right, Darren, so we just got finished with uh, your open workout ahead of UFC 244. You're, you're looking pretty thick. You're, how, how's, it, how's it not having to make the grueling cut down to 170? Because I know right around now you'd be measuring your macros and counting the calories and the amount of carbs you were taking in. How does your body feel for not having to do that uh, so much? I think there's just like a spring in me step. So like getting to this point now, I really wouldn't want to be in the gym because not because I don't like life it there, but because of the way cut. Because I know I'd have to come on so such low foods and I'd have no energy, but then I'd still have to go through a grueling session. So like I think now to explain it best is like a spring in me step. So like you know, I, I'm I'm eating well. I haven't wanted to like bulk up and I've got a little bit bigger, but I just I wanted to stay around what I'd walk around at for welterweight and then cut that to, you know, middle, a few kilos. So I just think there's a little bit more of a spring in me step. I there hasn't been a day in this fight camp or even before where I've come not wanting to train because of past experiences. Like there's days where you're tired and you think I'm gonna have to get through this, but it hasn't it's been for a, a different reason. Whereas the past four weight cuts were just all revol revolved around like the weight and Collins let off me as well a bit like you know Colin would be hard on me 24 hours a day you know obviously because he wants me to make weight but Colin knows I know what's needed for fights and he knows I put the hours in the work in so Colin's just been letting me turn up and he knows I do my extras you know after every session I'll run and stuff like that so it's just it is a little bit of a weight lifted off my mind. And you say that you, you, you don't want to bulk up too much because no. a lot of fighters do make that mistake when, yeah. they, when they move up. Like I think Luke Rockhold kind of made that mistake in his yeah. move up. Is speed going to be the key? Is, is this what you're looking for against Calvin? Because obviously he's quite, quite a small middleweight and he used to be a welterweight like yourself. Yeah, I think if I can match these welterweight, uh, these middleweights strength and size with speed, I think that gives me an advantage in that area, you know, I'll be faster than most, but Kelvin was a welterweight himself, so he's obviously already got the speed from that, so if I can carry on my speed and that from welterweight and movement, you know, I'm going to be faster than a lot of these guys, so it's never mattered to me, Colin, Colin said to me uh, once about any man over 70 kilos should be able to defend himself against any other man, and I agree with that, so it's not necessarily about size and strength to me, it's about technique and speed, and, that, and that's what we're we're working on and, and you know to not make this you know just to go in there and have a good fight as well like, that's what i want and obviously um when, when i first met you a, a couple of years ago you talked about wanting to fight in the biggest stages in combat sports you're going to fight at one of the meccas like the mecca of combat sports madison square garden how's it feel to be coming in event in there where the venue where muhammad ali fought joe frazier and the, yeah. you know, so many great boxing fights have happened it's just surreal especially as well that the main event is a former opponents uh, a lot of people have asked me as well uh, what do I think of that and you know truthfully from the heart deep down not one bit of like jealousy or being a green eyed monster there is just pure you know I, I'm happy for Masvidal that he's got that main event spot uh, and it's true 100 percent for me but you know I'm there still coming and you know the card is the trash cans and the, the posters around New York mm. has got my face on as well so you know, it's like a joint venture there. I, I can't. I don't really know what to say. It's it, it's it's sort of like a ride at the moment. I'm not I'm not being able to say even with the losses and the wins. It's it's just like this one mad ride. Like since 2017, the start getting back fighting in Sweden. You know, from a, a two year layoff. I don't really know what's going on in my life right now. It's just you know, main event here, main event there, fighting this guy, fighting this guy. I, I don't really know what to say. I think I think I'll probably appreciate it more when I haven't got it. I think that's what a lot of guys. Do. I don't think they really appreciate. I don't think I, I. don't feel like I'm appreciating the moments as I should be now. So I feel like in a few years I will. I will really sit back and appreciate, and I want it all there. You know, in a few years I want it to still be about this now. But we're just. I'm just going through this ride, and I'm just. Doing, I'm enjoying it really. Hard. Kelvin possesses a uh, high knockout power, like yourself, heavy, intense style. Oh, sorry. Did you? Freezing. Yeah, freezing, mate. Yeah, Kelvin possesses heavy knockout power, has a high intense style like yourself. Yeah. Did you expect to always end up throwing down with him and what have you made of his career so far? Uh, I, I, I don't, you know, obviously the way the fight got made, but a lot of people keep saying about me having like big bollocks taking this fight and, and, and I don't see it like that. like. Where I come from and how 
you know, how we train and how I am as a fighter mentality is I'm here to fight the best, win or lose, I'm here to fight all these, you know, these tough fighters. I don't, I don't really understand the concept of the easier path or the easy fights. If that's what you want, maybe you should look at another career. You know, I'm coming off two losses and probably taking one of the most risky fights, not even in the middleweight division, in the whole of the UFC. So, you know, I can't say enough about Kelvin, I've got respect for him, but I'm going in there to, to prove me worth against him. And you mentioned win or lose there. In a recent interview with BT Sport, you said, you know, if I do lose, so what? A lot of fighters won't even address the idea of the possibility of a loss. Do you think you doing that completely frees you up as an athlete in there? Listen, you know, I, I could may well lose. Could be, a, could be another knockout. There's, there's nothing really to say about that. Either it is or it isn't. If I know what I'm good at and I do it, Kelvin won't touch me. He won't, he just simply won't lay a glove on me. But then it could go the other way and he, you know, he could be victorious on that night. We'll just have to see. But yeah, you know, if it's a third loss, you know, at least I didn't take the, the shit back route. You know what? I'm fighting the best and I'm taking all the time I tried to convince not to take the fight and I just was like, why? Why? You know, if it's, a, if it's another loss, which it won't be, so what? You've said if you win, you want the Anfield fight after that. Do you think, even though it's not been confirmed, do you see this fight as a number one contenders fight for the middleweight, middleweight belt? I, um, do you know what? I couldn't care less about the middleweight belt right now. I really couldn't. I just couldn't care. Whatever happens with Israel and Costa, whether Israel wins or loses, if I win against Calvin, I feel like that's the fight to make Anfield. You know, and Regardless of the title fight though, is yeah. Anfield just a legacy moment for yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, whether the title's there or not. Listen, let, let, let all these top middleweights now, they, they, they have earned their right. Let them chase the belt. I'm chasing something different right now. The belt will, will come within time. You've got, I've got to be very patient. I'm only 26. I'm coming in an MSG, you know. I've got, another, I've got a lot of years left to give. The way you carried yourself at World Away was very imposing because you always talked about making yourself seem bigger than you are in terms of your posture. Looking at you now, with the added mass, do you feel like you're the most physically imposing man at middleweight? I'd like to think so, yeah, but uh, right now I just haven't really, I think the only, the only thing I've been thinking about at middleweight is I want to I wanna stay like a welterweight without the course, so keep everything the same, keep me training the same, you know, I, I did recently start lifting weights, but when I say lift weights, it wasn't really lifting weights. I told the trainer, I said, I don't want to get big. I said, I don't want to be strong. I said, I don't want to be look, walking around like I should be on Venice Beach or something. I said, I just want to be a little bit stronger, you know, so I can hang with these guys when they're trying to go for takedowns and on top of me on the ground and, that, and, that, and that's all. So I want to keep everything the same. I think the only thing I want to change is, is, is the weight cut, and, and that's what I've done. So, you know. You mentioned the main event on that card. Nate Diaz versus Jorge Masvidal. How do you see that one going? And does having that fight as the main event light a fire in you even more to kind of steal the show? Yeah, uh, I think I think me and Calvin will steal the show. But also, you know, Nate Diaz is a cardio king, but he doesn't possess the power I've got. So I don't know if Nate will, will knock Masvidal out because I hit Masvidal with, you know, with a stunning left hand. He said he was like sort of knocked out on the ground, but you know, he still survived. So I feel like that fight could be a five round war as well. So I feel like the co main and the main both could be show stealers, but you know, obviously with the main event, that'll be the talk of the town. But as I said, listen, just to see my face up there, you know, is I've got no negativity towards Masvidal at all. You know, if he's making millions, if he's doing fair play to him, you know. Since, since that fight we've had, he's only gone bigger, and I'm happy to have helped him with that, you know, even if it was what was the downside to me. But, you know, uh, I, I just can't wait to fight and then see them two fight. I'll be back in the green room watching them two fight as, as a fan of, of the fight game. How important was it taking that time out after UFC London and not just jumping back in there purely to avenge a loss? Not, I'm not saying the loss against Masvidal, yeah. but to get another win in the column. Yeah. I don't know, 
it was good. You know, I kept on saying I robbed a few taxis and that. And, <laughs> you know, I just had time off from 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 life. I just, you know, was still in the zone. I just wanted to find that people. Say, you know, I just wanted to find what I wanted a bit more. You know, because uh, obviously I was a bit off in training and that. You know, it's it's hard. Come, I haven't lost a fight since I was sixteen. I, I've been sort of like the top dog everywhere. No, no one's been able to beat me. And then to come from, you know, two losses on the, the big stage, it, it does hurt. So I just had to like step back a bit and I think more when I get doubted and the challenge is bigger, that's what excites me. So when like it was lingering to be able to fight Kelvin, I, I think it fired me up more because of how many like people, I think like 90% of people are just doubting me. And, and that, that lights a fire in my belly. It sort of reminds me of when I, when I fought Cowboy, you know, so. It, it just it lit a little fairly, a little, little fire under my belly. Yeah, talking about your um, body transformation now, or progress, would you call it? Yeah. Um, I spoke to Dan Stewart this week and he was saying that he had um, nutritionists and you know, strength and conditioning stuff. In between London and now, was there the temptation to, to do all that or you know, to, to kind of rewrite it? You sound like you had the idea yeah. anyway. Like, what, 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 sorry, I don't understand. I mean, I, in terms of how you were going to get to this. You know, you were moving up to middle. Did you want to change things? Were you going to get nutritionist? Did you really think about uh, that deep? Not really. I think just instead of eating one cheeseburger, I eat two. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, I didn't put much thought into it. I go to obviously call for every piece of advice. And, and, and yeah, I, I was always big for middleweight, so I was probably walking around it's at a middleweight fighting at Welter. So I don't, as I say, the changes was only just like a little bit of strength in them, to, you know, just li little tweaks instead of, I know that Brian Ortega, you know, I got on well with him, just recently like changed up his whole camp, I've heard, and you know, that's probably best for him, but after like people lose, like AJ lost to Ruiz, people were telling them to sack his trainer and that, and it, it's, you know what, don't get me started, I'll go on a rant, it just fucking pisses me off because it's like the grass is always green on the other side, and, People are just so fucking disloyal, and, and, and I'm not. I, as I've said from the start, I believe in my team, and we we win together, and we lose together, and they believe in me. So you know, li little small changes is what I think is is is, is needed in, in every fighter. You know, so all this like, you know, when you lose, oh that needs to be changed and that. Maybe you need to change. Maybe you're the problem. You know, you're there of some guys, they've had like 10 different gyms in the past five years. In my eyes, they're the problem, not the gyms. So it's like, you know, only little things needed to be changed. Yeah. And when you stepped up, you said it yourself, everyone said for so long, oh, it's such a big well. Yeah. You know, when, when did you move up and whatnot? Um, what made it the right time? Um, yeah, what, what was the alert to find it? Kelvin, just like the challenge, like, because I was sort of thinking, oh, well, I can make well to eat. If I count myself in a struggle, but then I'm a middleweight, and then uh, you know it was back and forth. And Ariel Hawani asked me a lot of questions, and then the Kelvin fight, I was just like, oh, do you know what? There's nothing to lose yet. You know, I don't mind taking a smack in the mouth. So why why would I not want to take the fight? Probably all the fighters would not take it because oh, it'd be my third loss. Oh, you know, you know what? I don't think like that. I just really don't think like that, honestly. That it's, it's it's like a situation. It's like do or die for me. And, and where do you think I'm gonna win or lose? There's no one in this room or on this planet who can not respect me for taking the fight. Yeah, me mentally, obviously coming back from the two losses, that's obviously a, mentally as important as anything in this game. Was there a temptation you think, oh, I've got to finish business if I were? Or yeah. was there any of that? Or did, how was Dan White? What was his style? Uh, I, I I still have unfinished business at, at Welterweight, so let me play out this next year, let me see if I get the Anfield fight, you know, I'm not looking past Calvin, but let me see what happens this year, you know, I've still got a few names at Welterweight who will want to take out, so it's not impossible to go back down, I can do it, mm. you know, no one cuts weight like me, no one, so I can do it, you know, so, I, uh, to answer it really, I start on finish business.
I know you said you're not going to really focus on the middleweight title picture, but what did you make of uh, Stylebender against uh, Wicker? What did you make of his performance? I didn't. Ex I just didn't expect it. I just thought that Wicker was because I'd seen the two fights with Yol. But then again, people say that after fighting Yol, you're not the same. So you know, I'm glad I'm not fighting him because he, you know he's a scary dude. <laughs> but uh, I, phenomenal. I couldn't. I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't say any more. Uh, goodness, term we actually speak. We, we speak. Nearly every week, me and Israel, you know, we've got a good relationship. It doesn't change the fact I still want to punch a hole in the switch, yeah. does the name, but unbelievable. And now I see him just buying like a supercar and stuff like that. As I said, same thing to Masvidal, nothing but. There's only a few guys in the UFC who I just think, you're a prick. The rest have got no animosity. If, if they're making 100 million or whatever, why, why should I hate? I should aspire to, to get that and be like that. You know, it should motivate me as well. And obviously, this is your first non-main event in nearly in nearly two years, and obviously you're training for a three-round fight now. How, how have you tweaked your training just for a three-round fight, or is, oh. is it just been training for five rounds as usual? Yeah, it's been like sort of in between. Usually, we it, I remember for the Woodley fight, the fittest that I've ever been done, me and Colin, you know, after a run and before training, we're doing ten fives on pads. So now, obviously, we, there's, there's there's less rounds, but still the same time. You know, we're doing you know double. Of what the fight is in rounds wise, sparring and, and pads and stuff like that. So, you know, it's still sort of the same, but it just it, in your mind, every fighter will probably agree it's just like, oh, I don't have to go down five, you know, and, and it's three. You can, you can actually go three, five, and you can go all out. So, I know that's why I know it's going to be a good fight. You talk and, about guys that you might have unfinished business with at Welterweight. I'm guessing that Colby Covington is one of them, he's the most divisive guy yeah, in the sport right now. Not really, me and him never, we had a little bit of chatter, but never really crossed paths. I feel like he's on a totally different path. I feel like, like that, that fight with Usman was, was, always, was, always, was always a fight I, I wanted. As much as a lot of people tried to avoid him, that was a fight I wanted to get. And obviously we're being the champ now. And you know, you never say never, but you know, Masvidal, maybe I could get back at him. I, don't, I, I think, by the time I've gone through all I'm going through now, whatever, Woodley will probably be maybe retired or whatever. I don't see him staying around much longer. But, like, yeah, there's a few unfinished business. Who's business. never antagonised you at all or irritated you in anything that you said? Maybe it's not been directed at you, uh, but... Do you know what? Really, I'm just not as stupid as everyone else. It's just an act. <laughs> everyone else is just... If you on the receiving end of it, though... I just couldn't... I you could just like, laugh at If you heard the conversations I have with my friends, you'd know that. Stuff like what he says just really doesn't put an effect me. It's like I just know that's just an act. So I don't. Obviously, for the fans and building fights up, it's great. But as a fighter, if you take what he says personal, you've got a lot of issues with yourself. So yeah, if we ever fight, I'll build a fight and I'll call him names. And you know, I'm not like other fighters. I wouldn't push him if he ever said something. Would try to smack his jaw straight off. But that's that. You know, I would never take anything personal. He says. Because to be totally honest, words don't really affect me. A local question, sorry. Um, what's brought you to Nottingham and, and what have you made of what they've got here? I heard that they do a lovely five guys, so I've come to check out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, the UFC gym, obviously, you know, it's an unbelievable facility, and, and the UFC got in touch with me and asked me if, if I'd like to come down and do a bit of training, you know, obviously promote the gym and, and, and get all the media down. So, you know, here I am, and, you know, just got, I'm going to enjoy the few hours that we're here. Enjoy the team, enjoy the facility, and you know that's it, really. Who do you think is going to win out of Colby and Usman? I think, I think if you put them both together, they're the same fighter. But Usman is a bit. I look at Dan agreeing, you know. <laughs> is this the fact that we're agreeing for once? I agree on this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Usman has got everything that Colby has, just a bit better. I think he's got more power. I think. I, I wouldn't. I don't know who's got the bigger gas gas tank. I know that Colby has got an unbelievable gas tank, so I think Usman just edges it, but you know, when I look like what he done to Laura, a lot of people said Laura wasn't the same, I don't feel like that, I feel like Colby was just too much for Laura, so when you break a fight down, this is the going back to that question, because people hate Colby so much and take what he says so personal, they just want Usman to win, they're not looking as Colby, Colby's actually a terrific fighter, so if they... Forget all the fucking bullshit he says because he's just an idiot. He's actually a terrific fighter. And obviously you're going into... Cheers, 
Obviously, you're going into this fight on the, on the back of two lots. <laughs> you're going into this fight on, on, on consecutive losses, and there was a bit of a social media backlash. You know, you know how some MMA fans are, are kind of fickle and they, and they turn. What's your message to these doubters, to everybody who's doubting you ahead of this tough fight with Kelvin? Um, you know what? Just you know, as soon as I beat Calvin and I get on that mic, make sure your camera's on because you'll know what I have to say. I'm not going to say it now, but I've got stuff to say to a lot of people. <laughs> to a lot of people who, 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 who don't believe in me and are so quick to turn their backs. And they know who they are. And a lot of the casuals know who they are. And, and I certainly know who they are. So make sure the camera's on and that mic gets put to me and my hands raised. How do you see yourself finished in the fight? Uh, hopefully he just doesn't turn on me and gets raised. That would be the perfect. <laughs> 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 All right, thanks guys.